Hello. <clears throat> Hello, beautiful people. It is Myra Medhurst here coming to you live on my personal Facebook page. Hello, hello. It's so good to see you. If this is the first time you've ever heard me on the internet, well, hello. Please say hi where you're tuning in from. I would love to welcome you to the teachings and the community of the Golden Path Experience. If you watched me quite a bit and you're following along with this sequence of Facebook Lives, you can send me a heart. That way I can heart and love back on you. Or if you're watching the replay, you can hashtag replay. So for those of you who are new, my name is Myra Medhurst. I'm the creator of the Golden Path Experience, and I specialize in the evolution of human consciousness. Now, back in 2009, I started speaking about Atlantis, and I ran my first workshops in Atlantis and Lemuria. And I actually built a temple here on the Sunshine Coast, Australia, called Temple of the Priestess. My husband and I built it, and this is where I also run uh, workshops, live gatherings, and really it's a healing and ascension school. Hello, thanks for tuning in. I have had a massive experience last night and I was like, oh, do I share this privately in my Facebook group? But I really want to get this message out. I really think it can help. And this one is especially for the ladies. So I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, Akka, last night, <laughs> I could not sleep. And the most incredible electrical storm came over where I live. And there was no thunder. It was a silent electrical storm. And sheets and sheets of like white light were filling the sky. So it wasn't dark. It was a, like a white night sky. And then I just, I was tossing and turning and I couldn't sleep. And then I had this, I had this kind of download and this, this message, whoa, it is hot. It is juicy. And it is like, ah, it's such a great download. It's like hot off the cosmic press. And this is really going to help the ladies who identify with priestess. You identify with the burning witch years. And so the burning witch years is something I don't spend a lot of time on. I used to in the early uh, years of my work, but it's not the core focus of what I teach now. I teach um, a lot more kind of different things of the new frontier of the human, our relationship to our DNA and our multidimensional nature. But you can't kind of have those conversations without touching on Yes, Amanda, hello, gorgeous, priestess of the rose, that's you. And so you can't kind of talk about those themes without touching on either the burning years, which spanned 300 years. Let that sink in. 300 years across Europe, across the Celtic countries, so if you think about that, that's like a, conservatively, I'm saying that's four generations. So that's your great grandmother, your grandmother, your mother and yourself. That is huge. Also, there's the burning of the Library of Alexandria. So those two things I talk about, they're not the core focus of my work now. However, this theme has come back strongly the past three or four days. This is what I got last night. This is a game changer for so many women out there wanting to stand in their power, activate their voices and really anchor their soul's highest mission. So for every woman that was burned at the stake, for every woman that had fire, it was as if she was held in this most divine safety and she was able to easily and safely digest and consume the fire. It's as if she was like biting into a slice of chocolate cake. It was that easy. This is the download I was having last night. So for every bit of fire that was used against us, we were able 
to just allow it to safely be consumed and kind of devoured in our bodies. And it has been residing there in our DNA, through our Akashic records. Now, this is what I saw last night through the white skyline of this electrical storm. I saw the white dragon flying in as a serpent and it was breathing the fire that was used against us in the burning witch years. And this completely makes sense to me because I've got a magical gift. <laughs> I've got a superpower and that superpower is being able to see repeating cyclical patterns and I understand the mathematics and like dispersion of energy across our reality. So when we experience our suffering, nothing is wasted. That energy is never wasted. So nothing through suffering is wasted. And it's a symbiotic relationship. So that on the micro, we would say when the mother is breastfeeding her child, when the suffering or when the disease or when the ailment exists on the planet, the solution or the remedy or the healing balm must simultaneously be present. It's out in the field. The solution is always out in the field. And the priestesses, through all of those burning years, 300 years, we've all been able to sweetly devour that fire. And now we are coming back through the year of the dragon, through the skies, through the astral planes, and we are breathing that fire. We are redistributing that energy back into the field. The fire that we are breathing now through the dragon is a safe flame. It's a divine flame. It is not meant to cause any harm. It is actually used to ignite all of humanity. And we are breathing that fire back now on the planet. It is meant to ignite each and every single soul on this planet into their soul's highest mission. We've just absolutely redistributed the energy that was used against us and we're gif gifting it back to humanity. And I just saw the dragons flying through across the whole planet, breathing that fire across the forests, across the oceans across all of the continents of the globe, driving the density and the gross, the, the debris out of the field. And what it does, it, it ignites every single soul into their highest mission. It, it ignites people back into their power, back into their light, back into their sovereignty. It is an exquisite, exquisite, download and visualization and if you have not had your soul's highest mission reading yet it's like now is the time now is the time to truly ignite and anchor your voice your power your ability to be a ceo over your cellular structure it's like you are holding the pen crafting your reality and it is through our Akashic remembrances and through the multidimensional nature of who we actually are. It's one of our abilities. And so we're opening up all these beautiful sacred abilities, healing arts, the songs and stories that have been kept kind of in the vault and now just wide open in the field, ready to be shared again, ready to be sung again. Hmm. <laughs> so nothing through suffering is ever wasted. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, receiving through your message. Yes, Amanda. Hi, Cece. Welcome in. 
So we have a temple gathering this Sunday, the 10th of March, the new moon in Pisces. It is eclipse season. If you reside on the Sunshine Coast, Australia, I strongly recommend you come into one of the in-person events. If you'd love to absolutely ignite and anchor your soul's highest mission. So many people are looking for their purpose. They're looking for direction. I've done over thousands and thousands and thousands of these readings over two decades. It speaks to your crystalline templates of your shadow, your life path and your soul's highest mission. The women and the testimonials, it's like, I've got a home coming. There is like a deep resonance of, and they cry. It's just like they're finally falling in love with the authentic nature and the truth of who they are and their gifts that they need to bring to the world. Hmm. I'll drop a link below for an um, in-temple night, the soul's highest mission reading. I'm so happy to bring this information to you. It was huge last night. No wonder I couldn't sleep. <laughs> It's time to rise, sisters. This is it. It is game on. <laughs> I love you. And remember, follow your golden path.